Welcome to the best of the Oprah show. You know, one of the things I really just like about Dr. Phil McGraw is how easily he can get people to talk about what's bugging them. We invited an entire audience full of husbands to come to our studio and get some straight from the hip advice from Dr. Phil. Now, these guys might have been dragged here by their wives, but I can tell you, they really started to open up to Phil, because he's such a manly man, and got many relationship strategies in the process. Their wives were watching backstage, and they got an earful, too. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. It's Men Only Day in our studio. And Dr. Phil is here with a special relationships class for men. Tell everybody you know, turn on the TV now. Uh, a special relationships class for men. It's the show that all the women have been emailing us about and writing us and begging us to do. You're gonna wanna watch it with the man in your life. So put the tape in. <laughs> Thanks. We read thousands of emails and letters from women who are not happy in their relationships. Did y'all know that? <laughs> Some of them are women you know. Uh, and they say they want something more. Dr. Phil has written a new book called Relationship Rescue, and uh, it's doing very well. We've been doing a series with him on relationships, and today he's going to tell it like it is. Y'all know tell it like it is, Phil? Y'all yeah. heard about it. Hopefully, a lot of these guys have a whole new understanding of how to be in a relationship after this. I know millions of women uh, right now are saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Finally, someone else is going to tell it like it is to my husband besides me. Their wives are backstage, a lot of these men. There Hi. they are. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. You're going to get it now. Hi. But earlier, they shared the biggest complaint about their men. When Nina says to her husband, Mark, can we talk, he literally, she says, heads out the door. Her biggest issue is that she has to nag him to communicate. Sound familiar? Take a look at this. One of the biggest issues that I have with my husband is the way that he communicates. He communicates on his time. I may need a day or two to process a feeling that I have or a question. When I come home, I'm ready to, to talk to my husband. I'm ready to hug him, let him know how my day is. And he's sitting up just watching Golden Girls. She wants to be constantly under me and touching me and feeling on me and caressing me. And I just feel like when you come straight through the door, that's not the time and place. It takes time for him to get ready to listen. He may put me on hold just because of the fact that something else is going on. But then when I stop him from doing what he's doing, like turn the TV off, he gets an attitude, but then calls it nagging. But basically, I just feel as though I need to be heard. It's not that I'm ignoring her. It's not that I'm hiding something from her. It's just that that's the way I am. Because of the fact that he's not really communicating with me, he's just laying there watching TV, I feel as though it really doesn't matter to him anyways. When she doesn't get the answer or response that she thinks she should get, it drives her crazy. So to get back at her sometimes, I will, on purpose, go off to myself and make her come to me. Is this familiar to anybody else in here? Yeah! Yeah, I thought so. What do you say, yeah. Phil? Well, but now you just may be a little too damn hard to get along with here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, did, did, I, I heard in the tape that you're complaining that she wants to touch you, caress you, be all over you. Tell me the bad part of that. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing bad about that. In fact, I like that. It's just that. There's a place and time for everything, and coming right through the door, if I'm coming right through the door to jump on me, I mean, I need time to unwind. Okay, now, but you, does she, like, surprise you, or does she kind of come home about the same day every day for two and a half years? You know she's coming, right? Yeah, I know she's coming. Okay, so it's not like she's sneaking up behind you here. Right, you're right, you're okay. right. It's and just... you know what she comes through the door wanting. Yes, I do. And you have the ability to give it to her. Yes, I do. Uh, but... <laughs> uh, okay, but you've decided that you don't want to do that. Sometimes I don't. In fact, you said sometimes on purpose I don't do it. 
just to get back at her. Well, one thing, it seems like when things go wrong in a relationship like that, what you saw on the tape, it's all my fault. But it takes two. Sure it does. But it, it, you did at the end of the tape say, I do this to manipulate or something. Sometimes. I'm learning not to. I don't do it as much. Well, learn something else. Don't believe I'd have told that. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a plan, would you use it? Yes, I would. You would use a plan if you had it? I would use it. Because there's a formula for success in a relationship. <laughs> I mean, a real clear formula. The formula is that the quality of a relationship depends on how well it is based on a solid underlying friendship okay. and how well it meets the needs of the two people involved. So if, sh if her needs aren't getting met, then her experience is going to be one of low quality, right? Correct. So do you know how she interprets your pushing her off, not engaging with her when she reaches out to you? How does she interpret that? That I don't want to be bothered and I don't care about what went on in her day and that my love may be less for her than mm -hmm. her is, hers is for me. Do you think that enhances or decreases her self-worth and self-esteem? It definitely decreases it. OK. So when you do that, you're sending her a message that says, you don't hit my radar screen. I'm not willing to stop what I'm doing to deal with you, even though you need that right now. Correct. It, how do you feel about sending her that message? I don't like it. That's why I'm here. I want to correct that. OK. But do you realize that you are sending her that message? Yes. What message do you want to send her? Uh, that I love her, that although we've been married for a year and a half, I want the same spark that we had before we got married to last 10 years down the road. I just don't want to go through the motions of being a husband and wife. I want to continue to be her best friend, her only male friend. Uh, I want all of that. So you want the same things that she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Pretty want much, much does he? <laughs> right, but you understand there's a big difference between falling in love and being in love. Oh, most definitely. Big difference. Yes. I mean, the yes. heartbeat and staying up all night and having the same color. You like, mm -hmm. yeah, we both like blue. We both finish each other's sentences. We, you know, all those things you do when you're infatuated and falling in love, that changes. Not worse, just different. OK. All right. If you were going to negotiate with her, what would you negotiate? I just want her to understand that I don't communicate like she does. Mm -hmm. I want her to understand that I communicate differently and accept the way that I communicate while I'm trying to give her what she needs, if Obviously, that makes sense. other guys agree with you. What are you saying? The women have to understand that men communicate differently from women and that men are much less, on the average, verbal than women. So that it, someone said that uh, men have 2,000 words a day and women have 7,000 words a day. So if a guy, come home, a guy comes home and doesn't want to talk to you, it's not that he doesn't love you, he's just out of words. And I think that there is... <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> do not communicate like women. We're not as yappy as women. And, and, when, and when they talk a lot, it's necessary for women to communicate. Did but you mean that word, yappy? <laughs> I'm saying that the perception from a guy to a fulfilling female type of conversation can be that it's too much words, too many words, and that guys communicate tend to be a lot less verbal and much more nonverbal. OK. What do you want to say to that? Well, I agree with what you're saying, but you have to understand only 7% of communication is verbal. The rest of it is nonverbal. It's whether you turn off Golden Girls when she comes in the door. It's whether you get up and acknowledge her as she comes in, which says, you coming in is a big deal for me. This is a big deal. I don't have to give you the Gettysburg Address, but I can turn off the television and come over and acknowledge you coming through the door. And I'll tell you, if the women were here and they'd say, you only got 2,000 words, then they'd say, say four or 500 for me, OK? Because I, I need that. And, and whether it's, it's comfortable or not, the need is still there. What do you want to say? Yes, sir? I, I understand everything you're saying, but I'm a communicator. You know, I love my wife a lot. But she talks all the time. She nags me all the time. I try to relate if she needs this, something needs to be painted or whatever. All the time I can work with her, but when that happens all the time, what's the position that you should take? All right, I have a question for you. 
What's your, I heard your victim story, now tell me <laughs> what your ownership is. What are you doing to create her coming at you constantly, constantly, constantly? She's just nagging you, nagging you, nagging you? I love you, sweetie, but... <laughs> what is she you not... Know... <laughs> <laughs> right. don't, don't... I have to go home tonight. Okay, don't suck up now, you started this? <laughs> You started this, you gotta finish it. I'm just okay. asking you, what is she not getting from you that makes her ask the same question 20 times or make the same statement 20 times? What is she not getting from you that she wants and needs? I, I honest, honestly don't know. Well, that I would really be real know. high on the priority list to find mm -hmm. out then, wouldn't it? Because if you give her, the pe reason people ask questions over and over is because they're not getting an answer. You're not ringing the bell. Next, she had to beg her husband for flowers when she gave birth to their twins. If your man is weak in the romance department, what that really means when we come back. I really want to know why my husband needs my help planning my birthday gift. Why are the only dates you take me on in front of the TV? Why is it you can't remember my birthday? but you can remember everything about your car. Jaguar XJ6, six cylinder, 12 spark plugs, front wheel drive, rear drive, hatchback, double locks. Why is it that you always have time to play a ball game but you never have time to take me out on a date? The women are speaking out today about their biggest frustrations with the men in their lives. We got a whole audience of men. Dr. Phil is here, Relationship Rescue to help them understand what it is that women want. And after six years of marriage, Lisa says she has to beg and plead for any romance. Her husband, Mike, forgets her birthday and says flowers just die. <laughs> and are a waste of money. Take a look. My husband basically doesn't have a romantic bone in his body. He tends to ignore holidays. Treated the first Mother's Day like it was just another casual day. I don't get her a gift on Mother's Day, uh, I would guess, uh, because usually I forget about it because it isn't a uh, something that I think about and uh, re realize the importance to her. It's the little things from um, having to tell him, to remind him every birthday, every holiday, Christmas, Valentine's Day, um, reminding him to get me a card and then he'll wait till the last minute and either sign it in front of me, sign it that day, buy it that day. Um, it loses, it tends to lose its meaning with me. It, it makes it feel like he's doing it because I want him to and not because he wants to. I guess it comes around before I know it and ends up being too late. They take it for granted that you're just gonna care and you're always gonna be there. It's not working for me, I'm lonely. So we need a little help. What do you think about what she just said? Well, it's kind of sad, I guess, in, in a way. The, uh, I, <laughs> I want to make Lisa feel good, and it's pretty obvious there that I don't with yeah. the holidays and special occasions. Well, you heard the formula meets the needs of the two mm -hmm. people involved. So how are you doing as a relationship manager? Um, How you doing on meeting her needs? Meeting her needs emotionally, probably not, not not very good. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, from material side, I guess where more of the focus seems to be, and yeah. uh, don't mean to be that way, but that seems to be how things turn out. So why do you choose to be that way? I mean, because it's not that you can't; it's that you won't, right? I mean, you know, you know how to tell her you love her. You know how to mark your calendar. You know how to do the things. Mm -hmm. So you're choosing not to. Tell me why. I guess the uh, why would would be that she almost demands it, uh, as opposed to uh, letting it come out naturally on my own. Uh, why don't you do this? Do this now type of a, an attitude. So this is a form of rebellion? Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be or it is. <laughs> Probably is. Probably is. Well, what do you think she needs? I mean, speak for her right now. This will be a little strange, but let me be you, you be her. What does she need? What I mean, she speak need? for her. What does she want from you? Uh, she wants lots of attention. The, the, uh, she wants to know that I love her, uh, that I've 
that there is no other uh, other person there that's more important than she is. Yeah, but I, you know life. I love you, so why do you, why, what, what's the big deal? You know I love you, I told you that, and we got married. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what does she need? Wants me to be there in every, every way that, uh, that I can be. But I'm there um, every day, and I, you same, know. Same mind frame, same thoughts, same, uh, same actions, same likes, same dislikes, I think, overly uh, more so than, and we don't have all the same likes and, mm -hmm. and dislikes. But you don't want her to want those things, right? Because you said, why does she need that? You don't need it, right? I don't think I need it as much as, as she needs it. And What you're saying is, I don't know why she needs it, because I don't need it. But does it matter why? You've got twin boys, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. If one of them came to you in the middle of the night and said, Daddy, I'm thirsty, and you weren't thirsty, would you just say, well, I'm not thirsty. Go back to bed. <laughs> no, not at all. No, I don't need any water. <laughs> so, would, it, would it matter why he was thirsty? No. It wouldn't no. matter. It would just, just matter that he was, right? That's correct. It doesn't matter why she needs it, just that she does. And, and you're trying to get her to be more like you, right? I think that's probably pretty accurate. Well, uh, let me tell you, I don't want to be married to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be married to somebody that thinks like I do, analyzes like I do, feels like I do. D do you really want to I, I roll over and the, look at you in the morning? On the same same line, I think she wants me to be like Well, be but like there's got to be and, some uh, middle ground in there. She could be like you. I mean, how would you mm -hmm. like it if she walked up, spit, blew snot out of one side of her nose, and scratched like a ball pitcher? Is that what you want? No. Here's the deal. You can choose behavior, but you cannot legislate emotion. I mean, you can say, I'm going to choose to behave differently. She can't say, I'm just going to quit needing. So that means you have some latitude here in this negotiation that she may not have. Cornell, uh, your wife says that she can, you can remember everything about your car, but you can't remember her birthday. That's the same <laughs> wife you were talking about earlier that nags. <laughs> that would be the one. <laughs> yeah. It's a great car, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you very much, sweetie, I must say, but sometimes, you know, it's, it's kind of like a getaway. It's kind of like a, a form of solitude. And it's not like I'm, I'm purposely ignoring her, her birthday or I'm forgetting the anniversary date. It's just, you know, it's a priority. I just, I just can't live up to it the way I probably need to. I don't believe that. I've made that same argument, and that dog didn't hunt at my house. Now, you know, <laughs> how about you that I, that I didn't? I mean, because you can give her what she wants, right? Yes. And, and you can give your wife what she wants. There is a conscious decision to withhold it. You say, she wants too much, or you say, I, you know, I just, it's a great car. You know, you know, I have fun with the car, but not with those things. And there's a conscious decision to withhold that from your partner. And they know it's a conscious decision, and you'll never convince them that it's not. I don't think okay. there are any accidents. I don't think it's accidental that you forget your life partner's birthday or your anniversary. That is not an accident. I'm sorry, it just isn't an accident. There's some attitude behind that. There's some priority behind it. OK, so far we've talked about communicating about how men don't, for the most part. And he was sharing that they don't have as many words. Y'all don't have as many words. and this lack of being able to be romantic. I think it's very important for women because it's how women uh, measure their value in the relationship. It is. It, it is very important, and, and that's what I'm saying. Do you realize what message you're giving? H how do you expect her to feel after you omit the things that you omit? You're the person she's chosen to pair up with in the world, and you choose not to acknowledge birthdays and special events and, and be romantic, how is she supposed to interpret that? Tell me. I don't know if it's not acknowledge the uh, special events and birthdays. It's more of a uh, the last minute comes up and didn't get it done and whether I uh, would go I, with her to get a car. What did you do this past Valentine's Day? What did we do? Uh, well, we, ate it. We, we decided we weren't going to do anything special. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay. Oh, We're well, coming up. He says it's his wife's job to do everything around the house with four children. She wants help and doesn't get it. We'll talk to him next. Wow.
This is a plate my husband promised to wash a week ago, and I'm just wondering how we can live in such a mess. How come when you take off your underwear, you set it next to the hamper instead of putting it inside the hamper? There's a clock right on the TV. Doesn't it dawn on him that the kids need to eat and have a bath before midnight? I really want to know why you can be motivated at work, but yet the baby's crib is still up two and a half years later. Lisa Strolecki has an issue with her husband, John, that a lot of you share. She does everything around the house, all the cooking, all the cleaning, and even homeschools two of their four children. And John says that's her job. Oprah and Dr. Phil, I'd like some help with uh, reviving the body that's been sitting on the couch. I do all the cooking, I do all the cleaning, I do all the laundry, and I homeschool two of our kids. I'd like to feel like I don't have another child coming in the door at the end of the day that I need to take care of. I get up at 4.30, 5 o'clock. That's when I start my day. My job requires a lot of mental activity. It's highly stressful. When I come home from work, I like to sit down, catch my breath, but I guess what she expects of me is to help her do her things, but I really don't want to because I'm beat myself. As far as the kitchen goes, the only way John can find it is it's through smell. He uh, has never cooked himself anything. Two months ago, I made a bowl of cream of wheat all by myself. And it was the best I've ever tasted. I guess to put it simply, my job is to bring home the bacon, and her job is to take care of the house. I would like John to be uh, more of a participant than just uh, a body on the couch. Well, I think a lot of men feel that way. Do a lot of you feel that way? A lot of you feel that way. A lot of you do. I heard some applause back there. A lot of them do. I think we were talking about this role thing that men have found themselves playing. Sure. I think John is typical of a lot of guys. Uh, John, define provide. You, you said, my job is to bring home the bacon to provide. D define what provide means for, to you. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, the providing I'm talking about is, is providing uh, the material uh, requirements of living. And, and that, that takes effort going out and working in order to provide the house, food, uh, everything that's involved in living. Uh, Lisa is a, is a full-time housewife, and I believe that's her primary job. I, I don't believe, you know, that I shouldn't help her with things, but... That is their primary function, like working is mine. Right. Would you agree with me that there are a lot of different kinds of income in, in this world? There's monetary income, but there's also emotional income, social income, spiritual income, companionship. There's all kinds of ways that one person can provide to their mate. And I'm, I'm asking you how you do in those other categories. Well, I think I do, do fine in the other categories. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, uh, she thinks I'm lacking, but, uh, no, I, 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 uh, I think, uh, that I, I provide her with what I think she needs. Okay, you, you no, you provide her with what you want her to need. That's very different. No, you, no, you what I think she needs. You don't provide her what you think she needs, because she told you what she needs. She didn't explain the one part of it. She wants me to be a mind reader. Uh -huh. We've had these differences. Oh, that's a good point now. I think that's a very valid point. It is a valid point, and that's why I say that relationships are negotiations. And can you sit down with her and say, look, let's not just let this unfold. Let's negotiate our relationship, and I can't read your mind. you got to tell me. Have you done that with yes, her? Yes, I have. And what did you learn? I learned that she doesn't understand that I can't read her mind. <laughs> so, I know, she, si simply so she put, didn't tell you. I, I, I says, Lisa, I, and, and, and it's true. I come home, I'm catatonic. But if she needed help, I'd give it to her. I, I want her to be happy. I mean, obviously, that's why I'm here. Okay. And, and the fact is, she gets upset because she doesn't think I help her around the house. Well, I don't think it's housework. I don't think of it. That's why I've asked her to, to tell me where she needs help and what to do. Because you don't see it? No. I mean, it's not something that 
<laughs> no, it's it, it's not it's not. I, I don't do it consciously. It's it's not something that I say. I'm not going to help her. Well, see, isn't this based on the, the way the way you were raised, John? Probably. You know? Yeah. Because I read that, you know, you came from a home where your mother did everything, including cut up your meat. Well, yeah, but uh, when I grew up... Yeah. When I grew up, that's the way people lived. Yeah. And I'm, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. I'm, like, saying if you grew up that way, then your expectation for your marriage and your family life would be the same. Yeah, but I've also told her to tell me because I am not a mind reader and I, I you know, I can't change the way I think at this point without knowing. Correct. Well, see, Phil, all these guys applauded when he said, my wife thinks I, I, I'm a mind reader. I think a, a lot of women do. Expect well, their husbands, their partners to know because they've been in the house all day or because they've been running the house all day. They expect them to know. And they're not communicating either. But it's Thank a two... Oprah. <clears throat> it's true. But see, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way street. I mean, w men stand up. We stand up and say, okay, look, I want to be a leader. But, but then we're not negotiating properly. I mean, what has to happen is somebody has to say, time out, instead of just letting this flow, let's make a plan here. I mean, let's come up, yeah. let's negotiate what this relationship is gonna be. And shouldn't part of the plan be, because we've heard this from this gentleman, from this gentleman, from John, that when guys get home, I think if you come home, I feel this way when I come home, I just want some time to myself. So I think that part of the negotiation has to be, let me get in the door. But women can't read men's minds either. And if they've used up their 2,000 words, <laughs> then, it, then, then they, they have a problem with that. And I've heard a million of them tell me that. What we have to say is, look, if they understand that, then they won't personalize it. If it's like, look, I need 30 minutes to go to my workshop or go to my room or go to my study or go to the garage or, or just go veg out on the couch or whatever, and then I get home at 6. I, don't, I may walk in at 5.30, but I'm home at 6. Give me that time. Then women won't personalize it. They'll say, I don't have to take this as rejection because we've talked about it and I label it differently. But that comes from communication and not just... I mean, mind reading is a two-way street. You can predict what's happening all the rest of the evening based on what happens in the first four minutes of interaction. So you have to decide those four minutes are going to take place after I've decompressed, and, and the women have to respect that, and the men have to respect it, and, and they, but they've got, that's a negotiation. And if, and if the guy comes home and opens the door and it's right in the face, you know, the dog ate the cat, he got a D, the kid got a D on his math test, you know, the, I mean, there's a, something broken in the backyard, I got a bill here, where's this, where's that? And it's like, oh, gee, I'm glad I came home. It's kind of like, let me get in the house first, okay? Let me get here and, and, and take the office off, take the factory off, take whatever off, and then let's start our interaction. And, and you, can, you can adjust for that. So you're saying that should be negotiated? It's a negotiation. Every relationship is a negotiation. And oh. negotiations are win-win. It takes both people saying, we're going to get the right attitude and do it. We'll be back in just a moment. Back in a moment. Dr. Phil's trying to help men understand women and what they want from their relationship. One of the issues that came up was women feeling that instead of having a husband, it feels like having another child to take care of. I want to know why you can be to work on time, but you're always late when it's time for us to go to dinner. Why do you have to wake me up every morning to help you coordinate your outfits? Why is it when you're sick, the whole house needs to stop? So, Charles, how is it you can get to work on time, but you're always late for dinner? Work is something that, um, for obvious reasons, at least for me, that, that you have to be very focused on. Uh, it's not a matter of, of why you didn't get there or what the reason was. You need to be there. Um, I'm in sales, and there, there's no excuse for that. Sometimes when you're, when you're working very hard and it's time to go to dinner, um, you, you're a little late. Um, so it's but, a priority thing. Ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think men don't realize that, and part of what we've been saying up here today, is that women get their validation from you being on time or making the phone call to say, I'm not going to be on time. See, it's how men... they feel valid. It's not about the dinner. It's right. not about the food. It's not about... It's about the fact that you aren't on time means that you must not value 
my time, which means you must not value our time together, which means you don't value me. So that's you, what that's you, about. You can ask men and women to categorize things yeah. like taking out the trash. Men categorize that. Men say duty, job, mm -hmm. just something. Women will categorize that and say love. He takes it out because he loves me and doesn't want me to have to do it. So if he doesn't take it out, you say, well, I just it's just a job. I'll get it done tomorrow. She may say, he doesn't love me or he would have protected me from that. There's a very different categorization there and that's why this negotiation has to take place. Because if you don't show up for dinner on time, that's dissing her and she's saying, hey, I, you know, I'm getting put down here. I'm not important. Yeah, and you're thinking it's just dinner and you ate already anyway. <laughs> Before the show, we asked the men to fill out a card revealing their biggest question when it comes to their relationship. We'll hear what they are when we come back. Back in a moment. Before the show, we asked the men to fill out a card revealing their biggest question when it comes to their relationships. And uh, where's Leonard Downey? Okay, Leonard wanted to know, he says, I don't know what to do when my Girlfriend withholds sex as a control weapon. Yeah, that's a troubling issue. And, uh... Well, I, I understand. You're not going to like my answer, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I, I, first, I'll tell you why she does it. She does it because it works. <laughs> okay? Exactly. She does it because she's got you on a string and she can pull that and get what she wants. And when you stop letting it work, then she'll stop doing it because you teach people how to treat you. And if she's jerking your chain with sex, be glad she's your girlfriend and not your wife. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Reverend Paul L. Jakes Jr., where are you? You say you don't know what to do when your partner asks your opinion on furniture arrangements and every recommendation is wrong that you give. <laughs> Well, yes, uh, well, many times, uh, you know, I move the furniture uh, for her, and she says, you know, move it this way, and, and then move it that way, you know, and sometimes we really just can't uh, actually get to a consensus. So, doctor, I know you're married, so can you help me? Yeah, I can help you. You just need to shut up and go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> In my house, it's carpet, and it's like those towels that, you know, those towels you pull down. My carpet in my house is just on a runner. I come in every day, and it's like the floor is different color. Right. You know what? I've just learned two words that have saved me a lot of trouble. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul 42. Where's Paul 42? Maybe a lot of Pauls in here. Paul, who says you don't know what to do when your spouse is raging on and on about some matter you thought you'd already settle. That's right. And something that you said earlier to Dr. Women are extremely complex. I know that about my wife now. Uh, we could have had a discussion about something. I thought it was settled and done a long time ago, but here it is. We're back in it again. I just throw up my hands, you know, and I just kind of roll with the flow and maybe keep the peace that way. But you know, one of the things we get suckered into so bad, Paul, is we argue about topics and 90% of the time, it's not about the topic, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's like we're going to talk about we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about kids. We're going to talk about the house, and that doesn't have a thing to do with it. What it has to do with is something at an emotional level that is is so different than the topic. But it's just not safe to bring up the issues, so we argue about the topics. And isn't usually the emotional level is I'm not being fed. I'm not getting what I need. I'm not being validated. Yep. Therefore, you being late for dinner makes me feel not validated. Sure. And what I'm trying to get men to understand is that when you give better, you get better. And, and you'd think we would figure that out. But the better you make her feel, whether you're in bed or you're walking down the street with her, whatever you're doing, the better true. she feels, the better you're going to get in, in terms of your companionship from her. Yes, sir. I get up every morning, I make sure my kids are ready for school. I come home and I'm in daddy mode. I do homework, I do kitchen work, I do clothes. It is not always reciprocated. That's not always the case. You make it very cut and dry. It's not cut and dry all the time. I do all the driving. I do all the grocery shopping. I have four kids, two are in school, two are homeschooled. Okay, so she's very tired, but at night she's working on other projects. I'm in bed at 12 o'clock every single night. So it's not always that easy. And it's not always compromise. What are you disagreeing with? 
I hear what we should do for the women. I'm hearing more of them. What about us? Yeah. What about us? You, you want to know why I'm focusing on you? Because you're the only one here. Aww. They're not here. If they Aww. were here, I'd be saying these things to them. But you know what? You control you. You don't control them. All you can control is you. So I'm talking to the person that you can control, and that's you. I'm not picking on you. I'm focusing on you because you're the only one you control. And you say in a relationship rescue that if there's something wrong with your late relationships, it's because you've set it up that way. That's right. You've set it up that you know, way. You're, you're, you're talking like your mother Teresa in a turtleneck up no, there. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I, I, but I keep... And, and listen, and, and let me let me finish. I keep hearing I keep hearing about what the men don't do, what we don't do. Right. We do a lot, but it's not always reciprocated. I agree. I agree. And that's where you got to get back into the negotiation, where you can say, "Hey, come here, darling. I am working from sun up till midnight, and you need to get in the game, girl, because I'm getting tired." There's nothing wrong with saying that. That's part of the negotiation. We don't need more martyrs. We need more partners. Next, he chose work and golf over his family and resented his wife for being a stay-at-home mom. His dramatic discovery that led him to falling in love with his wife all over again. When we come back, it's very... He was an absent husband and father who worked over 70 hours a week. The resentment between him and his wife was destroying the spirit of their marriage. But when Mac Robinson was considering divorce, he says he had one of those light bulb moments that led him to fall in love with his wife, Julie, all over again. Take a look. Six years ago, right after our first child was born, the focus turned from me to my little girl. And I wasn't accustomed to that and wasn't ready to accept that. And things were headed downhill. I found myself putting my husband on the back burner towards my family. He would always come in second. I was a workaholic. I buried myself in my work as a way to deal with the changes that had happened in our relationship. I never expected to help around the house. That was a choice that she had made to stay home. I afforded her the opportunity to be able to stay home. I was extremely resentful of my wife because she wanted me to help her out with the kids and with the cleaning. The, the resentment came out in the fact that I would tell her, well, you know, you just shouldn't be so lazy and, and most people can just suck it up and, and go the extra mile. There were times where I, I would feel really lonely. I would resent him for going on his little golf trips. I felt like we were damaging one another's spirit. I felt like we said hurtful things that we did not really mean. I felt like I had just had enough. We talked often about splitting her going to her mom's and me doing my own thing. It was really hard. I realized something had to change. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. Uh, I, we were just kind of living in the same house. The life that we had together was boring. I took a piece of paper out and wrote down the things that I admired about my wife and the things that I could do to make my marriage better and realized that I was a far cry from making the list. That was my light bulb moment when I realized, you know what, I can't change her, I can change me. When I used to come home, I used to always go upstairs, get the newspaper, sit down at the table, read the paper. Now when I get home, I help fix dinner, I'm spending time with the kids while she does her thing. On the weekends, that's our time to be together as a family. At night, after the kids are asleep, we turn off all the TVs, light some candles, we hold hands, and take turns talking about our day. We really seem to bond together when we just have good intimate talks that are uninterrupted. We love to make time for one another. I feel like my wife's spirit and self-esteem is just so much better than it's, than it's been in a long, long time. Amazingly, she's changed just by the changes that I've made. We've just bonded together. I really think we um, help one another to grow and to better ourselves. He says I'm his strength. Well, I think he's my strength too. 
We were a couple of friends sharing a house, living together. Now we understand one another so much better the things that we're going through that we're like intertwined. We're a team. Our spirits are one. Thanks, Julian Mack. I want to say thanks to all the men for being here. Dr. Phil's new book is called Relationship Rescue. And what did you want to say about it? Just this. For me in my life, one of my light bulb moments was when I decided to define success differently because I always defined it as how much money I was making and if I was being a good caveman bringing the bacon home. And then one day, I, I added something to it and that I was so competitive. I wanted to, my wife to be able to say that she could stand in a room of a thousand women and know there wasn't anybody treated better than her behind closed doors. And when I made that start coming true, then I was there. That's pretty darn good, Phil. <laughs> pretty darn good. Thanks, everybody.